Okay, let us go ahead and get ourselves going again. I want to shift gears just a little bit to talk about model integration. And oh, this is something you're going to want to be doing if you haven't done it yet in terms of having two different models. If we start creating more and more models of lots of different elements, you know, we need to sort of have a way of getting them all together. And let's kind of like uh, just give you an overview of where we're coming from. It starts with the notion that we tend to like to have separate models for each of the different systems. So very often architecturally, we have one model created by the architect. We'll have another model created by a structural engineer, which will often be a separate model. Now, some of you as you've gotten going may have started creating your structure inside of the architectural model, and that's kind of okay. We can sort of fix that or continue to work with that. But you should know that as you're working in industry, it's much more common to have separate models where different people maintain control of their own you know, section of the building. It works very well for making sure that people don't either accidentally change things or that things don't happen where they get changed that you're liable for the results, but you know they got changed underneath you. So we like to kind of keep things segregated a little bit. And when we do, we try to integrate the models back together. So there's this whole notion of linking models in Revit, and we talked about that a little bit. It really gets into having some sort of a grid system that's copied between the two, and then having things coordinated along that grid system, the structure in one file, the architecture in another file. Um, that same scheme will kick in and become much more important, you know, continue to be important when we talk about MEP systems, because the file for the plumbing and the file for the ductwork might be very, very different. We have to get them all together. So let me do a reality check with you guys. Like, you know, for how, like, for, yeah, just for each of you, like, uh, do you have two different files or do you have a single file right now in terms of, like, structure versus architecture? So, Henry, where are you? I have one. You have one? No, no worries. Most people are sort of probably here. Britt, where are you? Two. Two. Woo! How'd that happen? <laughs> Gustavo, Henry, I'm going to take him out and teach him a lesson. One, one. Christine, how are you? I have one. One? No worries. Say Jack. Two. Two? Two. Two. Well, you two. Now, it's easy to fix in terms of all that. We can go through and just save as and kind of sort out all the structural versus that or, you know, it's not critical. Either one, it's, it's just as a matter of principle going forward. When we get to mechanical, especially, do them as two. Because what's going to happen is the separate model files have different things. Oh, actually, it is going to come back. It's going to haunt you in just a minute here. Because when we start to try, try to do analysis, the structural template has some features in it that aren't in the architectural template. We can copy them in, but you'll have like, oh, you'll dance around twice and you know, throw salt off your shoulder just to fix it. And then, but you'll be OK. It's, a, it's sort of an easy fix. Mechanical is much harder. With mechanical, there's all these ducts and pipes and elbows, and if you don't get all the pieces, it's very, very hard to tie, tie it all together. OK, so not to worry. But we tend to go ahead and create these separate models for each system. We link the models together in Revit using this origin to origin and grid lines. Then we can start sharing the models. So sharing the models is really what I want to talk about now. Um, this will work to various degrees, good or bad, just depending upon how these, uh, up to date these machines are. Because on your own machines, uh, well, let me talk about this. A lot of the model linking that goes on, one of the best ways to do it is some, through something, a cloud-based service called BIM 360 Glue. Okay, and BIM 360 Glue works very, very well, but it's a cloud-based service, so they continue to update it. So what happens is if um, things have been updated in the cloud and your machine hasn't been updated, you'll get out of sync and when you try to link things or post things to Glue, it'll give you an error message saying it's not talking well to the server. Okay, that's kind of the gist of it. So, if ever that happens, and it may happen on some of our machines right now, the key is we just have to update them to the latest version of Revit and it'll have the latest version of how it needs to talk to the server in it. But let's just kind of check it out and see if we can. We'll talk about there's different ways of sharing models. You know, when we're linking, we can share them through cloud drives. So you can put them on a Dropbox folder, a Box folder, a Google Drive. We can do any of that kind of stuff. We can also do something where we post them to A360, which is kind of a cool system that is, again, a cloud-based drive. 
The nice thing is it also supports sharing a model. So we haven't done that yet. We can talk about whether you want to do that in terms of we could have two people working on the same file at the same time. Okay, and actually, Sangchai, you played around with that a little bit. It's gotten a little better. It's more stable than it was back then. But we can actually share files and be working on them at the same time. But we're going to do something today which is really more about not sharing them as we're editing, just trying to pull them together so that we can coordinate the work in the different models. And how this actually works is really just uh, going through and from within Revit saying you want to post your model to something called BIM 360 Glue. And then once we're in BIM 360 Glue, viewing it, marking it up, or just sort of uh, seeing what we'd like to go through and change about it. Okay, and um, there's a desktop application as well as some web application or uh, some mobile applications for doing that. But let's just kind of give you a sense of where we're going by going to Revit. And if you can, go through and of the folders or the files that are available for today's session, go through and pull down. There's some that say Classroom version 2016. So go to session 11 if you can. And go to Classroom Building version 2016. Go ahead and pull that set of files down if you can. Because we'll go ahead and open that up and just take a look at those. It's sort of an example of a fairly well integrated building. You go back out to Revit. Can I open this up for you? Take a look. I'll close some of these other ones. Got examples from all over the place today. Hey, but the classroom building, let's kind of take a look at it. I'm going to say, let's go ahead and from that session, let's start by opening the architectural file. The architectural file is of the classroom building. It's all in metric. I think it was actually done in Germany, but let's see if we can actually make some sense out of it. Well, there it is. It's regenerating. It's got a big file. Zoom on in, take a look at it. It's a very nice architectural model of a building. Yes? No? Oh, sorry. No worries. Stretching. Okay, so in terms of the building, um, you can look at any of the floor plans. It's basically a bunch of university classrooms and offices on multiple different floors. Um, it's a kind of well-developed building. There's a lot of information kind of available to us in here. But there's like the floor plan views. Oh, there's also a series of different 3D views that kind of give you a sense of what it looks like inside the building. So it's kind of a nice building. It's got a lot of atriums and skylights and furniture and stuff like that. And you can take a look at it. It's just sort of a nice building to take a look at. Where I'm looking at there, if I go to level three, you'll see along the kind of central corridor, there's a series of different atriums and a big glass wall that's bringing light in. And there's classrooms alongside of it and offices. It's just kind of a nice building. So this is the architectural model. Notice the architectural model has all these fantastic grid lines. That's going to be useful for coordinating, but it doesn't have structural and it doesn't have mechanical in it right now. Okay. If, on the other hand, you open up the structural file, you'll see that this one has all the structural information, but none of the architectural information. Just taking its time. I think it's still regenerating. I zoomed a fit. Maybe I was zoomed in. <laughs> okay, so this is an example of a good looking structural model. Just to get a sense of it, this is a nice concrete structure. So if you're doing a concrete structure, you might look at this as a good example. You sort of see we have all these kind of round columns. We have some floor plates. We have some beams. 
which are supporting the floor plates. Okay, it must be a pretty good slab system because there's not a whole lot of intermediate beams. We just have the beams at the major sort of uh, joints in the slab. Down underneath it, we have all these little pile caps. So again, this is one of those friction systems. We're going to carry those column loads down, and we're going to use these piles to go through and transfer that into the ground. And the way you could almost look at that is the number of uh, piles is somehow related to the number of columns coming down. Those are just doubled up and close to each other. But here's a structural system. Okay. If you really want to get adventurous, you might open the mechanical file too and sort of get a preview of where we're going. The mechanical file's right out there. The mechanical file has a lot of good information in it. It has all sorts of ductwork and air handling. It has plumbing. It has a lot of good things. I'm saying ZF to kind of get out there. You'll see that we have these very nice little detailed models of the ductwork and the registers and the terminals and all sorts of stuff. This is just sort of in a sample office. If you really want to sort of see the whole building, see if I can find that. 3D. That's a transverse corridor cross section. Hang on. Let's see if I can find a nice 3D view. <laughs> It's kind of a slice through the top of the building. So you start to see, for the first floor, we have uh, the ductwork, we have the lighting. We have all sorts of different things kind of floating around here. But the, now we have three separate models, and we'd like to get them all together. And that's really what we're going to try and do here. Even in here, see what's going on there. That says it's a curtain wall, although I'm surprised I get able to click on that, because I don't think I should be able to. I think that should just be linked in. So this model may have more in it than I actually wanted to. But what we're going to do is get these two different models together. Oh, actually, what's going on out here? That's just a section box. Hmm. And how we're going to get these models together is as follows. If you want to, when you are sitting there and you are working within Revit, you can link them together. Here I have my structural model. I have the architectural model. If I'd like to sort of see the two things in context, for example, I'd like to see my architecture and the structure in context with each other. What I can do is link them. Now when I link them, the only big restriction you have to worry about is you can only keep one of the files open at a time. If I'm going to have the link to the architectural model, then I can't keep it open. I have to just link to it, or vice versa. So. I will close architectural, or I will, then I will say insert a link. I'll say let's go to the architectural origin origin. It'll pull it on in there. And what you'll see now is the architectural and the structural are together. Okay, Just depending upon the view, this view is it's showing some things, but not everything. That's because this is set up to be a structural view. We still have the idea of there being different disciplines to the view. So the structural discipline or the architectural discipline only show elements relevant to that discipline. If you'd really like to go through and have more of what I call a coordination view, then what I tend to do is duplicate. I'll rename it to call it a coordination view. And that's really just a designation that helps me find it in the browser. But the key is over here to say, let's make that a coordination view. At which point, the architectural elements pop back in. So coordination views, views that have a discipline set to coordination, show everything versus the individual subdisciplines. And that's a way of sort of filtering as you work. So now I have the architectural and the structural married together. So if I do go through and I start looking at a floor plan or to some sort of view, this is the structural plan. You sort of see the beams and all that. You don't actually see the walls. If I would change that to be a coordination view, you'd see the walls in relationship to the beams. 
So just linking things together is definitely where we get started with all this. Okay, linking is kind of good from the standpoint of I can get a couple different things together and kind of look with them in Revit, but it's not necessarily the best way to actually find out are there any conflicts or to get multiple different files together. And that's where BIM 360 comes in. Okay, because what BIM 360, which is really like a cloud-based version of Navisworks does, is it lets you take a lot of different models from all the different disciplines and intersect them together into one holistic model that you can navigate around in. And that's what I want to get you into the habit of doing or to understand how to do. How that works is if it's working in your machine, kind of depends on sort of what the current state of the software is, what you do is you come up here and you say glue. Okay, and when you glue, let me go ahead and do this first, then we'll sort of get you guys set up so you can do it too. I'm logged in as Glenn at Bimtopia, so I have some different hosts available. I'll go to BSI Glue, which is for our class. I can choose some sort of project to put this in. Not too many in there. Where do I have 220B cats? I have it in there somewhere. Actually, let me do this. I'm gonna create a new project that we can put all our stuff into. And I'll do that by going out to the Glue application and inviting you all. So let's do this. I'm gonna go out and say, let's grab some BIM 360 Glue. And I'm gonna invite you all, I'm gonna create a project and invite you all to it, as well as give you some projects to work with too. Okay, so here's the way it's gonna work. We will uh, just basically get all of your uh, like email addresses if I don't already have you in here. Let me get in here. And create projects for you each to work with. So, well that looks fine. Okay, we have, let me go to admin and we'll create some different things here. Let me see who I have in here. Do I have Dr. Hamamji? I do have Henry Hamamji. Okay, let's see, I should have Brittany in there. Excellent. I have Gustavo. I'm almost positive. Excellent. I have Seng Chai. I have to spill it. Got it. And Miss Jacqueline, I think I have you too. Although it's always, it's TZ? TS. Yeah. TS? TZ. TS. TSZ. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to pronounce that. I need vowels. Okay. So, you're all in there, that part's fine. Let's go ahead and create some projects for you. The way it's gonna work is as follows. I'm gonna create a project. Okay, it's gonna be, let me call it 220B. Okay, I'll go ahead and put myself in there. Okay, TSZ. Oh, I didn't get Christine. Christine, are you in the system yet or not? I don't know. If it... No. Okay. We'll put you back in the system in just a second. Hamamji. Okay, Gustavo. And Brittany. Excellent. I'll add you all in as that. Super. Okay. What I'll do is, oh, let's just go ahead and play around with this one for now. We'll go through and uh, I'll add a project for each of you. So that, uh, just as an example, create a project. I'll go ahead and CE220B. Okay, so I'll have a Hamamji project. And the way that'll always be set up is, okay. I'll be in there, Alana will be in there, Ahmed will be in there, and you'll be in there. 
So that'll be a place where you can go through and store your own work as opposed to uh, kind of just this sample project we're doing it there. Let me go back into my admins and just add you. I have never added you. Okay, let's add you in. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Members, 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 how do I invite you? I gotta think about this. Oh, I know how to do it. Two twenty B what do I call it? Demo? I gotta clean out this directory. There was that. Oh, there is winter. That's what I called it. Let's go ahead. Or email addresses. What's your uh, best email address to use for you? CJUN. CJUN. At stanford.edu. Yeah. You should get an invitation, which you can accept. Okay, don't play around with that. Okay, so here's the way it's going to work. Um, you've all been added, so if on your machine you do this, go to um, some place called out on your desktop. Go to, if you don't see BIM 360 Glue already showing up on the desktop, we can make it show up there. Say b4.autodesk.com slash desktop. And what will happen is if BIM 360 Glue is not already there, it will install it on your machine. Okay, and when you get that installed on your machine, go ahead and try logging in. And you should see that you'll have a couple different projects. For people who are in 220A, you still have your 220A project, but then you should also have 220B winter 2016. Okay, are you seeing something that's asking you to log in? Or tell me a little about where you are. So let's think. It's v4.autodesk.com. Like that. Remember that one, right? Then slash desktop. Great. Okay, it's going to connect. And let's see. Okay, it looks like Gustavo signing in. Dr. Hamambi's analyzing. <laughs> Did you get anything? An invitation in your email? No worries. Okay, ah, look at this. Sunchai's fine. And his machine, it looks like it's actually going to be able to update. Yeah. Fantastic. Very good. And how are you? Downloading. That's okay. That's what we want. I feel like it just like opened here. If it's already there, try it. Oh, it's already there. Then that's okay. It's the other side, just the application to use it. Okay, so how about this? Since you guys are good, how about this? Since you guys are working, let's go ahead and have, um, Sunshine, could you go ahead and uh, open the architectural model and op uh, um, upload that? Okay, uh, Jacqueline, could you go ahead and do, say, the structural model? Okay, and I'll go through and do the mechanical model on this side. We're all gonna put them in the folder, the CEE, 220B this uh, winter 2016 as a demo so we can work on that together. So how that'll work again is do this with a little cooperation. I got my structural and my architectural. I'll close that up. So two of my friends are going to be uploading the other sides of this project. What I'm going to do is open up the mechanical side. Yes, it, it should only have to do it once on the, uh, it, 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 should, it should follow you around as your username. Can we just upload the 3D Just create, the, just do the 3D view. That's a good question. Let me even in here, let me just get the default 3D view so I can get everything. Here's the way BIM 360 works. That's a nice looking view, a lot of stuff in there. Okay, here's how it works. 
there's all these different elements. Anything that's visible in the view I'm looking at right now will be uploaded. Okay, but I'll do one special thing. I'm gonna upload that 3D view, but I'm not gonna upload the linked models because I gotta let the linked models come separately. But here's the way it works. Uh, as my friends are doing, I'm gonna say, let's glue this. And just three of us will do this, and then we'll all have access to it. And is it down at the bottom somewhere? You guys see it much more easily because you don't have nearly as many projects to look at. And this desperately needs some sort of search. If anyone sees something that looks like 220B winter 2016, there it is. I was going to say, catch me, because those things fly by and I can't see them very well. Okay, so here's the deal. You select the single view that contains the elements you want to export. And I'm just going to go for that default 3D view, as you can. Okay. What we're going to do is choose to name this thing. So I'm going to name mine, I'm going to call this like 3D mechanical. How about if you guys go ahead and give it your discipline also, you know, whether it's architectural or structural. And there's one option change I'm going to recommend under more options. There's this whole thing about whether to include the linked files. In general, turn that off. Make sure that's off. So if you see include linked files, then it'll happen. It'll load in the linked architecture, the linked structure, and we'll sort of have two or three different copies of the same model on top of each other. So I'm going to load them up independently. OK. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and glue this. Notice I have the choice NWC or DWF because I have Navisworks installed on my machine. I think you two probably have that choice too because Navis Navisworks I think is on these machines. I'm not 100% certain. Say glue it, cross your fingers, and let's uh, hope for the best. Now, because we're gluing it up, everyone will be able to access it. So it's thinking, it's talking. How's it done for you guys? Is it sending things or what's it saying? Processing. Processing. Oh, that's okay. I like processing. That's much better than failed. <laughs> okay. Mine may actually take one of the longest just because it's uh, the uh, mechanical model just has an awful lot of elements in it. Oh, it's the same thing there? Okay, no worries. We'll see. I'll do it from that side. What's happening is if you get a message that says this needs to be updated, okay, what happens is over in Revit land, okay, it looks like that's doing its thing. Okay. Um, and it doesn't surprise me on these machines. There's something called the Autodesk Application Manager. It's typically coming out of your taskbar. If you say open, you'll see that there's some different software updates that are typically available. And then within there, we're just gonna look for, there's a BIM 360 glue update, and let's see if I can find where it is. It'll probably be in December or January or something like that, but it's something that recently got updated. Autodesk 360. I don't even see the older than older ones. Let's see on your list if it has those in there. If not, we gotta get all the machines that we work on updated to have it. Do you see anything that says like a BIM 360 update? Yes, it says Autodesk BIM 360 add and that's it. Go ahead. For ones for Revit 2016, R3, Canvas, BIM 360, oh, that's for AutoCAD. Do the one for Revit. And how about you? Try doing the one for auto spread. That one. Okay, let's see if it'll let you do it. Oh, this may have some troubles where if it's not going to let us install it, it's because we have to log in using the, the temporary install password. It may be that your accounts are restricted, so we can't do it. Okay, but not to worry. Okay, now you seem like you could do it, so go ahead and use the. Yes, the temporary password. I never knew. No one heard that. So we'll get these machines updated. What I would say is for your machines at home that you work on, 
go ahead and run the Autodesk Application Manager and make sure that uh, the latest version of the BIM 360 glue for Revit is installed. Okay, looks like I have mechanical. Let me go ahead and open up the uh, architectural and we'll do it too. It's just somehow annoying that as we work, now we just have to, with all these things, it's all a question of just getting the software up to date. There's the architectural model. Let me uh, try gluing that in. Doesn't really matter. As long as I, one of us glues it in, it'll work. I'll glue that. I'm gonna add a view. I'm gonna call it the 3D view. I'll call it 3D architectural. Make sure nothing's linked. Okay, it's doing a little processing. How about this? For people who aren't gluing, let's see if you can actually connect to and use this model. And the way to take a look at that is to go back to the BIM 360 glue application. Okay. Again, if you don't have that, do the b4.autodesk.com desktop. But if you do have it, you should be able to roll on down through this list and see something that looks like Oh, 220B Winter 2016. You should have a project available to you if you've logged in. So let's see. Okay, that looks like Architectural is doing its thing. Even if we're doing that, I'll go through and do the structural. Where you see if you can log on in. So I'll say Open Structural. Okay, there's my structural model. Again, I'm gonna say add-ins, and I'm gonna glue it, and provided my software is up to date. Okay, it's working away. It's gonna be doing its thing in the background here. So let me go back to BIM 360 glue. In glue, let's see if you're in, if you can find a project. See if you can find 220B, and I wish these were all in alphabetical order or something sensible like that. Maybe these ones are. At which point I'm gonna curse myself for calling this winter 2016. No, they're not. Okay. Got to kill off some little projects here. Do you see a winter 2016 on your side? Yeah, I see it. You see it. Okay, you go ahead and open it. I'm going to find it on my side. It's just sort of uh, hiding in the list from me. Now I have scrolled by it several different times. Because you know it's in here. It's two. It's just it's two twenty B without. Yeah, and then winter, right? 
I wonder if I have to update this. This is kind of interesting. Let me go back into here. Like if the list is not upgraded. Okay, I'm gonna try that again. If I'm trying to remember where it was in terms of creating it versus when I created that list. Cat Lopez, nice, Ulamon, Puntos. There it is. Okay. You will see that in this model, I happen to have several different models, individual models. I have a structural model, I have an architectural model, I have a merged or a mechanical model. Okay. I would like to get all these things together. So, Britt, are you in the middle of it all? Can you, okay. Can you do this for us? Can you click on that little thing that says plus new merged model? And I want you to go ahead and choose all three of those. Mechanical, structural, super. Give that a name, something like architectural, mechanical, structural. Okay, say so merge those models. It'll show up at the top of the list. If it's not showing up on yours, we might have to refresh in just a second. It's opening it up from his Brittany right now. Everyone should be able to open it now. So if you go into there and, oh, I don't see the merge model yet. You might have to do a refresh or something like that. There it is. Okay. So, did you like it? Yeah, he's going to fix it. So Woo! I have to head out. <laughs> okay, no worries. Okay. Let's go back over here. I'm going to go back to my model list. There's my merge model. And it's going to say architectural, mechanical, structural. And if you open this merge model through the magic of uh, like Revit Electronics, it's going to put all those different models together into a single model. So I now have a single model, although it looks like my structure is offset from the other one. What do you think? I think the MEP is offset. Is, the off, is that one too? No, only the MEP. Yeah. Okay. So I might have a little coordination problem, that's okay. That's funny, so that's the MEP model that's offset from the others? Okay, that has something to do about with its coordinate system. We'll have to go through and fix that, which we won't do today, but let's go ahead and see if we can sort of walk through it at all in terms of going on. Tells me something, I'm gonna spin it around. Maybe do a little bit of panning here. Okay, so you think the MEP model is a little bit off, then let's go ahead and do this. I'll open up my little tree viewer, and I can let me turn off the mechanical. Okay, oh, that looks a little bit better. Okay. Now I can go through and start walking through the model if I like. And by walking through, what I can do is pan on down to some sort of more at street level. Try walking on in. Maybe go down a little bit further. I think, Jacqueline, you're correct. It was just the MEP, because it looks like the bottoms of the footings and the columns sort of appear to be in the right place. And I'll look up a little bit. Okay. And now I can start walking on in here and going wherever I want to in the building. Which is actually kind of a cool way to experience the building. So as we go through, the idea is, as we're looking around in our building and we're starting to see the different pieces of it integrated together, 
we start seeing all sorts of things that either work well and fit well together or don't work so well and don't quite fit together because as we're working independently, it's quite easy to make little mistakes or coordination problems. We'll look up towards the atrium. See the lighting? It's actually looking not too bad in terms of what's going on in there. Okay, so what we can do at any point as we're working now is either go through and save some viewpoints, some things that I want each other, uh, uh, that we all want each other to look at. We can make notes about anything that we're seeing in here. We can actually go ahead and look for clashes. And I'll just give you the quickest demo of that. We can, for example, say that this is an interesting viewpoint. I'm going to say views. I'm going to add a view to it and say, great. This is my uh, lobby view one. I'm going to share it with the project. And what's going to happen now is that viewpoint should be available to all of us. So in the same sense, if you go through and create a view, just kind of navigate to any sort of view you want to, then click on the little eyeball over on the left-hand side, you can save a view and put it out there for us all to see. So see if you can do that. And as you do, it'll sort of update and refresh things, and we should start to see some other kind of views that are available. So I just have lobby view out there. See if you can see my lobby view. Or if you can, go through and add your own view in. OK, has anyone else created a view yet? Nope. You have trouble getting in, or where are we in the process? So. Oh, that's a good looking view. We're just going to save that one for us. Okay, so just go to the little eyeball, okay, and just go ahead and like uh, say you want to create a new view and save it away. So this is just sort of like, oh, you got a fantastic looking view. Why don't you save that for us? Okay, that's up towards the uh, skylight. Super. Go ahead and uh, save it away, just so we can get that squeezed in. You can say, let's kind of add a view. Okay, and save that away. Okay, so what's happening now is, in theory, we have several different views. Let me kind of refresh mine. I have, oh, someone saved a nice exterior facade view named Brittany. So let's go. The view wasn't named Brittany. <laughs> My dangling participle or something. Or okay, so we can go to that view and take a look at it. We can go up to the skylight atrium view, take a look at that. That's kind of nice. So we have a way to start communicating with each other about different viewpoints that are interesting. Let's do one other thing just to kind of finish this off. If we're looking at a view, for example, this looks kind of interesting, but I want to mark something up and call your attention to it. I can use the little pencil tool and say, let's add a markup. At which point I can say, I'll highlight that connection over there and say, oh, even put some text in here. Hmm, this looks odd. It doesn't really. Can you please explore and fix? OK, so I can put a markup in there. What I'll do is I'll save that markup away. Now, this markup is now available so that if someone goes away to the exterior facade view and later says, let's see what people have marked up, You can get back and sort of see not only the viewpoint, but you could also see the annotation. So this is kind of useful in that we now can send around views of models with specific things that we want to look at. And even better, if I say that this is looking a little odd, I just don't want to leave it there as an issue that's outstanding in the project, if I want to go through and mail this to someone, I can notify. And I'm going to notify Brittany. I'm going to know that by saying Chai, Henry, and Jacqueline, you're all going to hear about it. So that's going to basically send you an email message into your inbox. And when you click on the link in your inbox, it'll take you right back to that viewpoint and show you that markup. So we have this interesting way of communicating with each other now. Because now I don't just have to sort of send you random messages sort of describing what I'm seeing. I can send you exactly what I'm seeing. 
So from a coordination standpoint, this ability to kind of pull all the different models together, get everything interlinked into a single integrated file, and then be able to kind of share viewpoints and markups within that is very, very useful. Okay. Where we'll continue to go with this is as we add more and more things to the model, okay, we'll not only be able to walk around and take a look at things, so we'll go on down the hall, change to whatever we need to do, go up the stairs, okay, but we'll also be able to do something called clash detection. So if we have some different models that we want to sort of understand, are they having spatial problems conflicting with each other or not, I can go through and say, let's uh, uh, check out the architectural model versus the structural model. Or the more common one is to do the mechanical versus the structural. but we can go through and let it go through and find any sort of spatial clashes. So we have all sorts of things that are potentially clashing between those two models. I can click on one of them, and it'll take me right to the point in the project where whatever it is that's clashing is highlighted. So I can start to see, you know, what is it? where the uh, clashes are occurring and issues that I might need to fix. Now, these are probably okay because I think we have the little mechanical model offset so that it's a false clash, it's not really in there. But this kind of capability is really useful for being able to uh, kind of quickly just sort of decide are things coordinated or are they not so coordinated. This is a small clash. Something's just interfering by about an inch and a half, something like that, so I'm not sure what that is. But we'll continue to explore that next time. So, big things to do between now and then. Go ahead and get your uh, sort of structural models looking good. If you can, go ahead and we'll send you links inviting you to your own personal project. See if you can get your architectural and your structural models both glued, okay, so they're up there in the same place. And that may involve a little updating your software to make that happen. But see if you can get them both in the same place. And then we'll start looking at your models as integrated models as opposed to all the independent ones. And we can share links with everyone so other people can start walking through your model too and sort of uh, benefit from seeing what you're working on that's so different from what they're working on. Okay? Beauty. Okay, let us adjourn for today then.